you haven't uh, you haven't been to a decision uh, in six years since 2014. Um, why is that so important to you to not leave it in the hands of the judges? I mean, we've seen people be very, very disappointed, um, you know, <clears throat> after instances like that. So, I mean, I really want to, um, you know, put the power in my hands, um, <clears throat> per se. I really want to, you know, have a say in, um, you know, how things are going to go. And, I'll, I'll, you know, a fan of MMA, um, I've been a fan for a long time. I've watched a lot of fights, a lot of close decisions, a lot of decisions I didn't agree with. Um, but, you know... Um, it's really impossible to figure out, you know, the the rhyme or reason some of these decisions go certain ways. So, you know, I can't figure that out. All I have figured out is if um, if I knock them out, I win, and if uh, you know they finish me, then I didn't win. So um, that that's pretty much what it is. Um, simplify the process for me. I really want to, um, you know, uh, the excitement, <clears throat> you know, the legacy. I think, uh, you know, when it comes down to, tw I'm 22 and two with. 19 or 20 knockouts. Um, you know, I'm very proud of that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just just important to me, not for not for a lot of good reasons, I guess. The referee comes to fighters before every fight and has like a rules meeting and it kind of explains, right, like a little bit, a little bit of a rundown of what the in cage rules are. Has anyone from a commission ever come to you and explained what the judging criteria is and said, "Hey, this is how we're going to score this fight"? No, absolutely not. I mean, there's you know, there's a definition of what's supposed to be scored, but you know, you can't take the human, the human out of it. You know, everybody, it's in the eye of the beholder, per se. And so, you know, um, if I, you have uh, two judges that are coming from grappling backgrounds and one from a striking background, then, you know, I'm sure that the, the grappling is going to be more heavily favored uh, in the scoring. You know, so, you know, you, I guess you could maybe see who your judges are going to be, um, see what kind of background they have, and then play to that. That would be the only way to, to kind of, because it's never going to be the same. You know, it's always going to be something different every fight, every time they change the judges. Do you wish there was more of that, of that transparency and more, you know, more explanation given by the commissions? Uh, there's really no, um, it's not this or that in this sport. You know, it's a, for me, the surest way past that is to uh, knock them out or get knocked out. Fair enough. Um, last thing for me, um, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, buzz on social media the last few days about, you know, Connor and Habib coming up, Connor and Habib, Connor and Habib, you know, maybe ultimate fighter. Um, but Habib has a fight coming up and, and it's against you in, in a few weeks. I mean, do you think that that buzz is a little bit like maybe pump the brakes on that a little bit? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, Khabib's going to go fight GSP after I beat him um, and then get and then go. So uh, I'll be here. I'll have the belt and I'll be ready. You think you think McGregor would be the first contender if, you, if you're the champ? I don't even want to talk about that guy. I'm done there. Fair enough. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. Yep. We will take our next set of questions from Mojang Wu with Hoopu Media. Hi, Justin. How are you? Great. Thank you. How are you doing? Hey, great. This is a Tiger brother from China. So many Chinese fans, including me, believe you are the most violent lightweight fighter in the UFC. They love to see you stand in front of opponents and exchange heavy punches, but we didn't get enough chances to see you fight on the ground for most time. Would you bring out something different when you fight against Khabib this time? Uh, so, you know, I've wrestled my whole life, um, and I wrestle a lot in there. Um, huge part of wrestling is not being able to let, it, let someone take you down and hold you down. <clears throat> and that was uh, my mm -hmm. main focus. My whole life when I wrestled, it was never, I never had a great offense, but you could not take me down. You could not hold me down. So, um, you know, I'm going to use that. You know, it's very important to stay off the ground. I'm not trying to go in there and wrestle with Habib. You know, I don't think I could beat him in a wrestling mm -hmm. now because I haven't focused on wrestling like that to, to be, to win, to win a wrestling match. You know, I'm not there, but, uh, you know, I've constantly worked on my defense. You know, that's never gone away. Um, you know, in fighting, it's detrimental to be on bottom. But when someone can uh, can take your can beat you up and and you know cause serious injury injury to you, then um, being taken down is not where you want to be and laying on your back. So I have to focus on not being on the fence, not getting taken down. And if I do get taken down, I got to make him work. Um, you know, like his life depends on it. If uh, if he does take me down, then I need to make sure that I threaten him with something 
up the middle that uh, you know, at least made him is going to make him hesitate next time. And so that's just that's what I'll be in there doing. Understandable. Wow, that's very cool. So we know you offer the five hundred bucks for anyone who can drop you you in the body shot sparring to get more prepared for war on this fight. So you have created a, a reward system to let training partners push you harder, right? Yeah. I have I have no doubt that. I have no doubt about your great determination and hard work you put for this fight. But but how would you keep the balance between training properly and push yourself hard prior to the biggest fight of your career? I mean, um, so I, Trevor Whitman is my coach, and you know he is at every single one of my workouts. I really trust him, you know, to to pull me back if I ever need to be pulled back, um, you know, things like that. But um. You know, the, I just really need people to come in here and, and really train hard. You know, I I can't have guys that are that that are hesitating. You know, because I'm gonna hurt mm -hmm. them if they're hesitating and they're scared. And I need people. You need to understand if you if, you know I can spar with anybody and not hurt you. Um, I've done it a lot of mm -hmm. with with normal people off the street uh, just for fun. You know, and and I will not hurt you. <laughs> You know, if you're at my level, you have control of everything. Um, I can put my foot on your face and not kick you. Um, so, you know, I need them to push me, but, you know, I just have to keep working like I always have. I've always had people around me that, um, you know, have protected me from myself. And right now, Trevor is that man. So, you know, if, if it needs to be, if it needs to happen, he'll do it. But, um, you know, I have to be ready mentally. Okay. Uh, and uh, it seems that you had a blast time when you met the leader in Nevada Rally half months ago. So what kind of energy does that give to you? You do remember that last time? I mean, it's, uh, when it comes to this fight, there's only like four or five things I can control. So that is, that doesn't mean a, a thing. But, uh, you know, after the fact, you know, I'll, I'll love to, you know, he's a, Trump is a huge fan of MMA. He's a huge, you know, he's a reason, maybe not a huge reason, but he's a reason that, that, you know, the UFC is here. Um, he opened his doors for us when we, we had no doors to walk through. So yeah, it was, you know, and me, the president of the United States, it doesn't matter. It could have been, you know, it could have been Obama. It could have been Trump. It could be, you know, if I meet the president of the United States, I'm from a very small town, a very small place, uh, from hardworking people. We respect the president of the United States. Uh, as our leader, and so it was really cool, really cool opportunity for me, for my family, uh, for my town, to get to have that that experience. Yeah, I found I found a very interesting scene. Uh, Kobe Covington put his hand over your shoulder when you guys were taking photos. So, what kind of a relationship you guys have built up after that meeting? Yeah, it was crazy, man. I actually uh, the day after <laughs> that I was I was you know singing his praises because of you know how professional he was and how uh i guess how he held himself but then he went on to do a bunch of interviews and i, I really you know I, I i i probably despise that man more than anybody on planet earth other than like child pedophiles and uh murderers and, and things like that but he is a coward you know he uh he is a fake person he shook my <laughs> ear. he stands there and acts like this uh soft you know stops hearted dude and then he gets behind a camera and is a total coward and a fake person i've never met someone as fake as kobe covington and um yeah as a man i would love to slap him right across the face wow <laughs> i see that so can i ask you one last question so uh could you predict the result of, of this fight and through which way ah uh, no i never i never guess or pick uh, how my fights will end, you know, I'm, this is the biggest fight of my life and winning is yeah. critical. Rit winning will, will change, will change the course of my life. Um, and so I'm putting everything and anything I can in order to be uh, properly prepared. Thank you so much, Gagey. And we love you so much as always. Uh, we appreciate your true character and the best good luck on that fight. Thank you so uh, much. Sure, you have a great day. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Dennis Gecko with RT. Hello, Justin. Can you hear me? Sir. Uh, do you need to get aggressive towards someone you're fighting or you just like to keep it professional? Uh, I never want to get aggressive. You know, it was weird. 
back when I was like in World Series, you know, I would, I was a crazy dude. Like, you know, during Wayne's, I'd walk around staring at my guy and trying to intimidate him. But uh, you know, I don't know if I needed a sense of confidence that I that I couldn't, you know, get by myself. But it was always fake. Um, I have despised some people. You know, I when I fought for Mino, you know, I didn't like the guy for some reason. Vic Johnson, you know, those are those are awesome awesome wins. You know, in hindsight, but you know, I really have learned that you can never let somebody control your thoughts or emotions. So, you know, I, for me, it's just another day at the office, and I'm trying to get paid. Is it going to be hard for you to get aggressive against Habib, keeping in mind what has happened to his family lately? No, no. I'm gonna try to kill him like he's gonna try to kill me. And I shouldn't be using that phrase. I'm gonna try and beat him, you know, into submission. I want him to quit. I want him to know that I'm the superior athlete, the superior man. That's the that's the goal of this game. Um, no, that's, you know, it's not a factor. It's not a factor for him or for me once that cage closes. Have you changed anything in your preparation as far as uh, different uh, sparring partners, keeping in mind Habib's style and his wrestling, his uh, his grappling level? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely been focusing on, um, you know, I ha in order to wrestle, you know, for a certain amount of time, you have to, you have to prepare your body. Um, this acid that starts to build up in your forearms and your feet and your calves and your thighs, you know, is uh, something that you can't just gain overnight. So I've definitely been focusing on this. Um, not only my whole life, but certainly the last, you know, like nine weeks, I've been really, really hammering down on it. Um, I surround myself with people that I, uh, that I pay to get me ready to fight and I follow lessons, I follow directions. So I'll be ready. And the last one for me, uh, Habib has been for a few weeks, uh, already in, um, Emirates, he's getting ready, he's training here and you come in later. Do you think it's going to be a factor for you? that he's just been here for, you know, a certain amount of time. He's well uh, 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 acclimatized, yeah. So, um, I think if I allow it to become a factor, then it can be, but, uh, you know, it's fight or flight. You know, when my, when my life's on the line, when I'm in danger, I'm going to fight. It doesn't matter if it's 2 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., uh, 11 p.m., it doesn't matter. Um, I was born for this, so you do, you, we can fight whenever. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Carl Neidhart with Zone Germany. Hi, Justin, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there. Uh, one question, it's a little bit specific, but we all heard the story about you helping Khabib with his weight cut a um, long time ago. Um, normally, Khabib has this this aura of invincibility for his opponents. Now you have witnessed him in a spot of like, yeah, not let, let's not say weakness, but in a frail, intimate state um, of the body. Is that a psychological advantage, maybe, because you don't have that that respect from that aura that he normally brings for his opponents? Uh, you know. Um... No, it, it does not play a factor. You know, I have to go through the same thing he does. And I, you know, when the bitch comes out of me, I see it first and, for, first and foremost before anybody else. You know, it's happened before. It happens sometimes. You know, you fight not to let it happen. But, you know, we are normal people. He is a normal person. He has emotions just like I do. And so I'll never believe anybody is, you know, greater than, sure. than a man, than a man can be. So, uh, you know, I know that... It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. I don't even really remember it. You know, I remember helping him out of the bathtub. You know, it, it, it meant nothing at the time. He wasn't in a bad spot. Uh, you know, he just needed help out of the bathtub. And I happened to be there because we had the same manager and I was in the same, you know, I was in his presence at the time. So it really was nothing more than that. Fair enough. Is that um, that level of respect between you two? Is that like the true essence of MMA? Not all the trash talk stuff and like talking bad behind each other's back and stuff like that, but just two athletes going at it and finding out who's the best. I mean, I think it's definitely you know where we started. Is, you know, the reason why we started was just to see, you know, which martial art was superior. Now we get to see which part of the world is superior, um, in a sense. And so, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud to represent the United States 
in this competition. That's all it is. It's a competition. It's a game, you know. And when it's over, we will we will have our family. We will have love from our family, and so that's what gets me, you know, through all this so so easy. But yeah, I don't know. I don't even know where it's going. From a tactical standpoint, um, I, I mean, normally in MMA, balance and finding the right distance are always important. But are they a little bit even more important in this uh, combination since your style meets his style? Yeah, I mean, this is a world championship fight. You know, he's number number one, number two, pound for pound in the world. Uh, so, what was the specific what was the specific question? If balance and finding the right distance towards your opponent during the fight, if these factors are even more important considering your the style you both bring to the table. Yeah, I think it's you know it's the most important factor in any fight. Uh, Who controls distance is, is established very early on in the fight. You can't see it. I can't see it. But, you know, someone establishes that. So, um, you know, and usually that person is is more effective. So it's going to be very important for me to establish distance control. Um, and I have to keep, you know, keep moving off angles. I can't sit, sit on the tracks. You know, you call them the train tracks. I can't be on the same tracks as he's on. I have to constantly be off the tracks. Um, and I possess some serious power. So, I, you know, I got to touch him. When he's least expecting it in a spot that he will go to sleep. Thank you. And last question. Um, your father has German roots. Is there a little connection towards Germany? Um, any any relationship to the country? You know, honestly, not a lot. Um, I've never been. I was raised Hispanic. Um, I'm white on the outside and brown on the inside. I've said it for since day one. If you watch me fight, you know, you know that's the truth. Thank you very much for your time. We will take the next set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Justin, I want to ask you, obviously, recently they announced Michael Chandler as the alternate. You obviously don't want him to be necessary, but I just want to touch on your thoughts if you were to potentially face him. I don't know, man. I have, that has not even almost crossed my mind. Is he somebody down the road, or is it only Habib and you're not entertaining any other opponents? Once I have the belt, uh, you know, it's going to be funny when, if I get the, when I get this belt. They're going to be like, who do you want to fight next? And the reason I'm getting this belt is so I don't have to call people out. You know, the target, I want the target on my back. Um, so, you know, we'll see how the cards fall. Understood. Uh, I saw you post on Instagram today. Um, look, I know as a public figure, and obviously since you're winning more big fights, you must get more and more DMs, some positive, some not. I just want to ask, how do you deal with that? You seem like a guy who probably keeps to yourself a bit. What's it like when you have all these people kind of trying to invade your personal life like that? You know, it comes with the territory, and it's really something that um... – You have to expect, you know, um, the only reason I shared that is because he, you know, he said he uh, has my address and he said he was going to come, you know, cause harm to me. So I wanted to uh, just, you know, kind of, I don't know, let it be known, I guess, that uh, there's shitty people out there, even though we all know that. But, um, you know, actually, since I made that post, the guy brought me back and said he was drunk and didn't remember saying it. And people suck. I get you. I'm glad you're doing well with that. Uh, a bit of housekeeping. You said in your interview with Brett that you were looking to get your camera person since Habib is probably going to have a crew. Was Ali able to get it done? Yeah, I got him. I got him. My uh, coach's son is coming out. He's our media guy. Secondly, I know you talked about having Rafa Garcia in camp to help you a bit. People are wondering, though, were you ever able to work with Kamaru a lot for your wrestling to prepare for Habib? No, after uh, Kamaru fought, he, he went back. You know, he's been back for a week or two. But, uh, no, he hasn't been a huge part of this camp. My final question, um, you go out there, you know, you'll have beaten Tony and Habib back to back in one year. Have you thought about what that's going to feel like? What do you imagine when they raise your hand? Man, uh, I you know, I've, I've thought about it. But I, I don't let myself go there because, you know, it's it's not necessary. But it will it will feel incredibly uh, 
fulfilling, I guess, you know, um, it's been a long journey for me, a long journey for my family, for my sister, my brother, my other, you know, my sisters, my brother, now my nieces and nephew, you know, we've been on this journey for a long time. So this is the pinnacle, you know, and I, I got to go perform. Hey, thank you, Justin. Good luck. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Igor Lazorin with TAS. Justin, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Justin. I'm from Russia. We made a live stream with you on in Instagram. So, yeah. <laughs> met, yeah. Good day to, to my colleagues, too. Uh, my question is uh, many fights in Fight Island are cancelled due to coronavirus. Are you worried uh, that your fight against Habib could be cancelled or postponed, too, in the same reason? I mean, it's, it's a concern, but. I have zero control over any of that, so um, you know I won't let I won't lose sleep. It would suck if that was to happen. That would be terrible. Uh, for one, someone would be you know sick, you know. So just wish that they would you know get better if someone's sick. But um, the the safety protocols are there for a reason. You know we're there to protect protect the athletes, protect the employees mostly. You know like you know the UFC employees aren't there to get sick. You know they're there to get a paycheck. So you know we need to protect them. Thank you. And second question, second question, many people told Justin underdog, Justin underdog, Justin underdog. What can you say to these people? I'm a, shit, I'm an underdog this fight. If you bet the last one, you made some good money. Um, I'll never advise people to go bet their money. But, um, you know, I've only, uh, I've only lost when I was the favorite. I'll say that. I was the favorite against Eddie. I was the favorite against uh, Poirier, and I was an underdog against Vic. Brilliant. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Nolan King with MMA Junkie. The time, man. Um, I think by a lot of people's assessments, this fight is the biggest one of your career. I think that's a, that's a given. But for a guy like you who's been on the, you know, in some of the most grueling fights in MMA history, dishing it out, receiving it. For a fight like this, does it feel any different? I mean, do you have nerves when you go into something like this? Is there an extra added level of anxiety, or is it just another fight? I mean, it's the biggest fight of my life, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. But no, I'm not going to let um, outside influences influence the way I need to, need to think or act uh, or prepare. So it's really just staying, you know, true to my to my beliefs, which is, you know, be better than yesterday, uh, make better choices than yesterday. And, you know, I've been doing that for eight weeks now. I got, you know, three and a half more. So I'll be ready. I'll be ready as I can be, possibly can be. Yeah. And, and 28 guys have tried to, to, to defeat Khabib and that's never happened. So for you, I mean, what do you think the X factor is here for you? What do you think you can do differently maybe that these other 28 guys have failed at? Um... I don't know. You know, every fighter is different. He's fought a lot of different guys. Mm. My confidence is probably my biggest factor right now. Uh, you know, paired with the power that I possess, um, paired with the coach that I have. Um, you know, that's a dangerous combination. And I don't care if I win or lose. You know, at the end of the day, as long as uh, you know, as long as I make my family happy, as long as I'm proud of my performance then it doesn't matter. That's what makes me most dangerous. Um, I don't know if he's ever fought someone like that. He probably has. Um, and another factor is a lot of luck, a lot of hard work, or a lot of, a lot of hard work, a lot of skill, and a little bit of luck in this game. So anybody can go to sleep. He's a fool if he doesn't think, uh, you know, he can go to sleep. Awesome, Justin. Well, good luck, man. I appreciate the time. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Julian Kivich with Independent Media. Hi, Justin. This is Julian from Cape Town, South Africa. How are you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How are you? Good. good thank you, man. Um, I just wanted to know from you, obviously, you guys had the same manager. Uh, was there any point of time that uh, Ali saw this fight coming along and had a discussion with you guys regarding things, how to go down the line, and, and how you guys feel about it? You know, I don't talk to Ali about other athletes that he manages. Um, you know, I expect him to, you know, when we're talking about business for me, that's all, we're, that's all that matters. Um, the way that this happened, I guess we probably didn't, weren't able to have that step. You know, I wasn't supposed to fight Tony, but I did. 
And as soon as I beat him, uh, this fight was, you know, you can't you can't take this away from me. So, uh, you know, he, Ali is here to make his athletes' dreams come true in a, you know, in a sense. He has, he has a little, you know, he has a, he has some good control over that on, uh, you know, when it comes to negotiating, making money, getting fights. Um, so, uh, you know, even people that know me and Khabib and they're like, man, I don't want to see this fight. I'm like, you know, why, if you, if we're both your friend, you know, why wouldn't you be happy that these guys are fighting to be the best in the world, you know? In what we chose to do, this is our choice. This is what we chose to to make, you know, our job. So for me, it's, if this was my brother, you know, it would be so magical and special that we both made it to the pinnacle of a sport to fight each other, to compete against each other. So if you're a competitor, that's how you look at it. You know, mm. and if if you're, you know, emotional, then, you know, you don't, maybe. Cool. And then just... um. Did you find it odd that he's come back so soon after the, the, the death of his father and seeing that his father played such a huge role in his life? Did you expect him to take a bit more time for say, Justin, can we move this fight maybe to December or something like that? Uh, I don't know. I can't put myself in his shoes. Um, you know, if it was, you know, I don't even want to, couldn't even put myself in his shoes because I don't want to ever think about that. But, um, If I was in his shoes, I would fight. If I was in his shoes, my dad would want me to fight. That's what we do. That's cool. what my dad would do. Cool. And then just uh, lastly, um, regarding the podcast with Joe Rogan, um, I know Tim has been trying to get the gloves also to be um, go mainstream. Also, has he got made any grounds with the, with, the, with his designs? And obviously, there's big, big issues with the gloves in the, in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're constantly selling out of our gloves. You know, we get a... We've sold probably, you know, last three or last two weeks, we finally got to send out our initial, you know, one of our pre-orders and we sent out like 480 pairs of gloves. Um, you know, we got shit guards and headgears coming very soon, very soon. And when that hits the market, I mean, it's going to change. It's just practicality of the equipment that's supposed to protect you, you know, is there. The, the science is there. The innovation is there. You know, equipment hasn't changed. They put a pad. And they, they want it to weigh a certain amount. You go look at go look at 16 ounce gloves on the market, and you're rarely gonna find a 16 ounce glove that weighs 16 ounces. You know, they're gonna weigh 15, 14, 13. Um, so it's important. It's important that you're wearing 16 ounces to protect your to protect your uh, opponents. Or not opponents, you don't to protect your opponents, your training and you know, trying to stay healthy. And uh, yeah, it's it's huge. But you know, starting a small business. I'm sure any anywhere in the world is not easy. Um, yeah. There's so many steps you have to come across, so many mountains you have to climb. And we're, we're doing it, though, you know. Trevor Trevor is an innovator, and, you know, he will change. He won't change, but he will play a huge role in changing the way, you know, we approach training. Yeah. Uh, on that point, all the best with the, the gloves and, and the equipment. That also, I can't wait to see you make that speech to let your mom know that she has to retire by now, eh? All the best, brother. Thank you, man. You have a great day. Same to you, Thoshat. We'll take our next set of questions from Tanuj Lakina with Network 18. Jason, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, so I just wanted to know, do you see and approach this fight any different to what you would in the past? Uh, no, no. I mean, any sort of different mechanism that you that you're considering or doing in the recent few past few weeks and going forward as well. Nope, just be my best. You know, um, I'm explosive. I'm athletic. I'm, you know, I don't look athletic, but I can do a flip off a of, off a of fence, no problem. I can do it on the ground, no problem. You know, I'm just athletic. I'm going to rely on the skill that I possess that I have, you know, been, you know, honing for since i was four you know so i'm going to go ahead and keep relying on hard work and um, smart choices and i'm going to go in there and fight you know i have to fight an incredible fight Any, at this level you have to be perfect you cannot make mistakes you know if he wants to go in there and throw throw it throw across into the wind then it's not a smart plan if i want to do the same it's that's absolutely stupid 
Um, coming to the strategy itself, um, Eddie Alvarez believes you don't have enough tools to deal with Khabib, especially with the grappling. What are your thoughts on that assessment? One more time. Um, Eddie Alvarez believes you don't have enough tools to deal with Khabib, especially with the grappling. So what are your thoughts on that assessment? Mean? I don't care what Eddie says. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Sue McDada with Sports Kita. Justin, how are you doing? I'm great. Great. Okay, so my first question was, back at UFC 249, you ended Tony Ferguson's winning streak, which eventually got you to this position. So what is your biggest takeaway from a fight like that, you know, ending Tony's winning streak? <clears throat> there was a lot, of, a lot of good things to take away. You know, I... I was very surprised that I could fight, you know, that long um, and be that effective for that long. So, you know, that adds to my confidence going into this fight is it'll be super important. Mm -hmm. So, recently we saw you respond to Conor McGregor on Twitter. You said you don't want to talk about him, but was there ever an offer on the table? Do you maybe fight against him? I have no idea. I really don't. I don't know. I mean... Uh I, I, they, they asked, you know, obviously after I beat Tony, they said, you know, I could fight him, but there was never an option for me. When I beat Tony that night, I, I punched my ticket. That was my golden ticket. I'm not going to, you know, offer it up for free. I'm going to punch my golden ticket. You said that uh, you won the target on your back after winning the title, but I really want to ask you that, would you like to avenge a loss to Dustin Poirier maybe, like sometime down the road? Absolutely. Yes. That would be very important to me. Okay, uh, last question. Uh, last question from me. So, Khabib, as we know, he's unbeaten so far. But you said that uh, you want to see him bleed inside the cage with you. What do you have to, uh, what do you, have to you have to do differently in order to beat him? And what difference could we see from Justin Gaethje that other people couldn't do? I don't know. <sighs> You know, Michael Johnson was a good striker. Dustin Poirier is a good striker. Um, neither are as athletic as me. Neither, um, you know, possess skills to to scramble out of takedowns um, and things like that. I mean, they don't not possess the skills, but it's not it's not their their forte. Um, that's what I've been doing for a long time. As long as Khabib is trained, I have trained. I promise you that. There's no possible way. We're the same age. Uh, he has not worked harder or longer than me. It's not not possible. Um, so I don't know what I offer different. That's a you know it's a really an irrelevant question because every the reason why you're such a big fan of the sport and the reason why I'm such a big fan of the sport is because of the unpredictability and that's that's what I'm counting on. Okay, well I wish you good luck for your fight, sir. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Leslie Wilson with Golf News. Hello? Hello? Hello, Justin. Hi. Can you hear me, Justin? Yes, sir. Hi, Justin. It's a case of so near and yet so far, you know, because I'm a journalist living down in Dubai, and um, it's, it's an absolute honor to see you face to face over here. But there's one problem. Coming on the back end of the interview line, many of the questions that I had in mind have already been asked by somebody else. So unfortunately, I'm going to go to have to go to plan B and ask you some questions that may sound ridiculous. All okay, right, here. here we go. <laughs> While most of us are setting our Java coffee in the morning on chomping on some scrambled eggs and hash browns, you be there facing up with another monster early morning. Isn't it strange, bizarre to be fighting early morning when people are just brushed their teeth and just waking up, getting their senses going, Justin? It will be crazy. Um, one thing that's a little bit different about this fight, I believe, I still haven't got you know an answer, but I don't believe we'll be fighting at the same time as, as the UFC cards have been happening. I think we'll be on European time, and I haven't figured out exactly what that means, but you know, I believe yeah. I'll be fighting between two and three p.m. my time, you know, local time where I'm at right now. Yeah, body clock. Yeah, cool. So I'll be good. Yeah. Justin, you've probably watched the Poirier-Khabib fight a couple of times. 
Uh, were there any lessons that you learned from that? Justin, uh, Dustin wasn't without his chances to break the invincibility of Khabib. Uh, is there anything that you saw a glimmer of hope? Um, I watched the fight the night that it happened, but I have not watched it since. Um, you know, I remember after the fight, you know, I thought, you know, Poirier really shit the bed when it comes to trying to stay off the fence. You know, and yeah. you know, it could be so good where it's just absolutely impossible to keep you out, out of, or you know, keep yourself out of that position, and then I'll look like an asshole and a stupid ass. So, um, you know, we're gonna find out. You know, I believe that I possess the skills to, uh, for one, you know, stay off the fence. If he wants to take me down, let's let's do it in the in, in the open. You know, where proper technique is absolutely yeah. necessary, and that's my goal. Totally agree. So how do you think you're going to keep the fight in the middle, Justin? Well, I mean, uh, <clears throat> Tony never got close to me. It's all about controlling distance. How I control distance is, is um, you know, cause, you know, it's going to be changing levels. It's going to be moving up. You know, I say train tracks. You know, I can't be on the train tracks with them. If there's a straight line here, you know, I got to be somewhere, somewhere off. If he's going to close yeah. the distance and try to take me on, I have to at least threaten damage. You know, whether yeah. I'm the collarbone, I'm elbowing an elbow, I'm punching an elbow or a shoulder, you know, whatever. As yeah. long as it's in this area, you know, it's going yeah. to cause hesitation. And hesitation, yeah. you know, eventually will will be yeah. a killer. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to say something ridiculous. I mean, I've never been a big fan of Floyd Mayweather, 14-0, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel there are a lot of comparisons with him and Khabib in the octagon as well. He's kind of an awkward fighter to me. Um, is that something you agree with, uh, Justin? Yeah, I do. Yeah. He's so effective because, you know, it's... it's I agree, it's, yeah. It, what he is, what you're going to see. It's impossible to replicate what you're going to see. You know, he is perfect. Um, we all, in wrestling, you know, you have a... Everyone has a certain move that they're great at, even though it's not technically sound. It's not even what you should be doing. But for some reason, it works for this person. Um, and that's how he is. You know, he is very great. Um, and he's going to be, you know, it's going to be a chess match. I got to be very, you know, methodical <laughs> approach. Yeah. Hope you be the Kasparov, Justin. What's that? I said, I hope you have the Kasparov. You said it's a chess match, so the great Kasparov... May chess need, something else, yeah. As long as we ain't playing real chess, because I ain't good at that. Yeah, okay. Cheers, bro, and best of luck. Later, man. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. We will take our last set of questions from Mike Bond with USA Today. Justin, uh, obviously none of us are pleased we're in a pandemic right now, but given how you performed against Tony with the no crowd, are you happy that this fight is going to be under those circumstances as well, especially given where it's taking place? I assume it would have been a very pro Khabib crowd. Yeah, see, I want to go into those hostile territories. So this is a missed, missed opportunity right now, actually. Um, but, you know, all of it's irrelevant, to be honest with you. You know, um, the most important thing would be for my parents to be there. But outside that, nothing matters, man. Fair play. And last thing for me, um, given what Habib has done, do you think this is going to be, if you win, the last time you run into him? Or do you think 28-0, uh, that's worthy of potentially an immediate rematch? There's a lot of factors that come into that. Um, how you lose, if it's a really, really close fight and I somehow get like, you know, a controversial decision, then yeah, I mean, I'm sure we would fight a rematch. If I could finish him early, you know, I'm going to look for for the next next amount of time. If I, you know, get finished early, he's going to keep fighting. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, how this fight goes is a, is a huge factor. And I know it's a bit of a loaded question, but if I just ask you and you think about in your mind, what kind of a UFC champion do you want to be? What, what do you want your title reign to look like? What would you say to that? I don't know. I don't know. I like to fight at least twice a year. That'd be cool.